and welcome back to Meet the Candidates. I am your host today. My name is Sharima Bauer, and my guest is Dr. Valencia Battle, who is the second ward city council candidate. Thank you very much for being with us today, Dr. Battle. And thank you for allowing me to come. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's our pleasure to have you today. So, all right, Dr. Battle, why did you decide to run for second ward city council? Well, I've, uh, I was born and raised in Flint, okay. so I know all about Flint, mm -hmm. and my family, I have a rich family heritage here as well, and uh, I've lived in the second ward for 41 years. Well, in the last 10 or 12 years, I've seen the second ward just deteriorate okay. greatly. Uh, we started mostly with street uh, pavement, needing paved, our streets paved, mm -hmm. um, and more recently, just to have our streets clean. They haven't been cleaned in years now, I would say about four years, mm -hmm. uh, which is causing problems for residents as well because when it rains, uh, the leaves from the w winter, from the, yeah. the fall to the winter, through the winter, right. uh, are accumulating. They're right. pushed, and then the drains block and basements are flooding and such. Some of the streets are, are just in dire need of repair. Um, the grass, the overgrowth of grass at abandoned houses as well as those that have been demolished. Mm -hmm. And it's so, such deterioration over so many years. And people, you know, in the, in the neighborhood, we, you know, people began to talk and talk about the dissatisfaction. And uh, they also talked about how they've tried to get things done, but they've been unable to get anything done. And many people have taken up the banner to get things done themselves. So there are some things that have happened, but uh, not with help. You know, and we should have help from our, our leaders in the community. So uh, after a while, it became clear to me that through much uh, prayer and supplication, mm -hmm. um, uh, the uh, encouragement of many people as well, that perhaps I should should run. I, I've been out here a long time. Oh, right. know what's going on. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Absolutely. So, and and you and you've kind of answered that a little bit too. This next question, but. Um, maybe you can expand on it a little bit more. Why do you feel we need a new council person? In well, the second yes, it, because many people in the community have said that they have tried to get help from the council person, okay. and they have been unable to get help to have streets paved, yeah. uh, to have uh, more police visibility, which is a big problem. In the second ward, we have lots of uh, shots, gunshots every day. And it may be in at night or in the morning, it doesn't matter. And that's something that is threatening to the safety of everyone in the community. So many people feel that they their concerns, issues, and their voice has fallen on deaf ears. So um, that's another reason that I decided to run. Yeah, I see. And so, and you've mentioned, you know, of course, you know, the, the streets not being cleaned or, or you know, made debris free. Yes. Uh, you know, from previous year's leaves, yes. not just last year's, not but just last year, no. year upon it year accumulates. upon year accumulating. Mm -hmm. um, also, you know, the sounds of gunshots happening, you know, morning, yes. you know, in the morning, evenings. All, all day. Yeah. And, and when it came 4th of July, you couldn't distinguish you between distinguish. the firecrackers and the gunshots. Exactly. You know, but, you know, people would like to sit out on their porches and uh, what, what would really be nice is to be able to go walking in your own community, in your own neighborhood, yes. and you get to wave and talk to some of the neighbors but we cannot afford to do that in the present state, and that's one of the things that must change. I see. What are some ideas that you have to bring? Some of the ideas about? that I have that will enhance the quality of life uh, is to, first and foremost, is to work with the water crisis Good. because it's imminent. Yes. It is something we deal with on a daily basis, and yes. it's so detrimental to our health. And one of the initiatives I have for that is the mayor has my proposal. I've worked, with, worked on for over a year, and she's had it just for a couple of months now. And that is to uh, not only allocate funding, but also that we find funding, even if it means grant writing, to place whole house filters in homes. And not only in the second ward, but throughout the city of Flint. But, of course, my goal would be to start in the second ward and replace those uh, whole house filters. The Replacing the lead lines from the street to the house is better than nothing, so maybe 
good, fair, mm -hmm. but it doesn't answer the problem at all because the water that's coming in from the infrastructure still have corrosion and lead in them. And so we need a filter that when it gets in through those nice clean little pipes we'll have in at least by three years that we have something that's going to protect us throughout. And it's not only from lead, it's from all of the other chemicals they have to put in the water. You know we deal with TTHM, yes. we have deal with uh, high chlorine as we are right now. You can smell it right. so strongly. And in order to stabilize chlorine you have to put in a lot of sodium. So that's detrimental to people who have hypertension, diabetes, and other health issues. So it's, it's just not, it's multifaceted yes. as to how this water crisis is affecting everyone. Yes. And so that, and then grant writing is another way. Mm -hmm. I want to work with the elders. I love elderly people right. and the youth. And there mm -hmm. are a couple of special programs I'd like to. There's funding available. Yes, I just yes. need to, well, get in place the, the council seat with there are other avenues but that would be a, a great avenue mm -hmm. because it helps uh, an abundance of people instead of just mm -hmm. a group of people we have lots of organizations but a group is helped we need to help an abundance of people and seniors and youth uh, are the most vulnerable at this time I think we have a lot of services for children but we're missing the other people Yes. And so yeah. the, that's one thing I have. I have written grants before and, okay. and, and been awarded uh, the, fi the financial, um, but also the uh, expert. There are some gr expert grant writers and happen to live in the second ward who are most willing to help. That's excellent. So a strong network is what you're saying. Yes, a strong network. Yes. I'd also like to do something in the second ward that would be quite different, and that is to use my headquarters uh, ongoing okay. for a resource center, a resource so that people will know who uh, in the community, in the neighborhood, yes. as, as well as the city, but in the neighborhood, also have businesses, yeah. that, and we can t uh, help uh, perpetuate our own businesses. Right. Also resources throughout the city because you don't know about the resources by the time you do the funds are gone. Yeah. Yeah. And then right. so there that could be a resource center to help pull people together and then people know who each other are in the community mm -hmm. and therefore their safety because mm -hmm. everyone will look out for each other and then more grants. Now there was recently a ten thousand dollar grant awarded for a park, the Fleming Road Park on mm -hmm. Fleming and Kniff, and then there was almost a hundred thousand dollars awarded for the Sarvis Park. Now the council person that's in office now did not help with that effort, but the people in the community did. So people are stepping up, but they still need leaders to help because yes. that is a leader's job. That's right. And so what qualifies you to be well, this leader? Uh, not only uh, knowing the community mm -hmm. and the people in the community, but also I've been prepared uh, through my education. Mm -hmm. I have uh, two master's degrees and two doctoral degrees. And so that also is a registered nurse, a social worker, and a psychologist. And so that will help also. I've had businesses. I've had four daycares. My husband and I have had a Battles Carpet Clean and Janitorial for 25 years. And no longer, he's not cleaning any carpet because people still want him because he's the best. And uh, now we have first class transportation, charters, and tours. And we t I have an elderly trip that I do every week because. I love old people and uh, so it, uh, it charters and tours for various groups uh, we work a lot with city uh, with groups around the city uh, Kettering the groups they have an international program uh, the YMCA uh, programs uh, and many other youth programs around the city as well I see, I see. and then some of the businesses and churches yeah so I've been we've been in the community we've been working we've been helping and uh, this is another uh, way to help, and I hope that it's an, it will be an expanded way to help people. Absolutely. And so helping people has you know, kind of maybe been what's driven your business, um, your business ideas. You've, it sounds like you've had success, a succession of businesses. Yes. And, uh, and also you know, a lot of the work 
How do you think the quality of life then can be enhanced for the residents of the second ward? Well, one way to enhance it is to increase their level of safety. Okay. And that would be visibility of the police. Okay. It would also entail those whole house filters. I, I'm just all for the whole house filters. I have one before my hair came out. When my hair came out, I'm just a nervous wreck. And my husband. Because he loves my hair, oh, <laughs> and I didn't know how much. Yeah. And uh, the uh, so we would help with those health issues. There are many health issues. Most a lot of people in the second ward have issues, health issues that uh, are diabetes, yes. uh, kidney problems, and 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 this is probably indicative of the especially African American population in the city of Flint, yeah. which is why the whole house filters would be, in, be uh, expanded to the city of Flint, of course. Uh, and so that would help a lot. Uh, and then grant writing so that we can beautify. We need to beautify. The second one is very nice, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mm -hmm. look that way. If you go on Winona Street, you've got potholes, uh, craters mm -hmm. on Ray Street, uh, Millbourne Street, and the grass is so tall yeah. that it's, it's just frightening to look down there. It looks like Cambodia or some war zone. And then I asked some of the neighbors out because they are so perplexed about the situation. Yes. And some of them are saying they're cutting some of the grass for the house next door, but they can't cut it all, yeah. and they don't have the equipment to cut it all. And I said, do you have any rodents? They said, ma'am, we have raccoons, we have skunks, we have gophers and beavers. So they have a cadre right. of animals who yes. have just thought, this is a great habitation you can find. <laughs> Let's move to the city. Yeah. And so, but it is a hazard to our health. Yes. The, uh, just to have rodents around is a hazard. Yeah. And also, the, um, for young people, the abandoned homes are a hazard. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And they are going in them, and we can lose lives that way. Mm -hmm. So we need to really demolish these homes, uh, tear them, you know, get them torn down, and then we need to make sure that the that the yard the uh, the yards mm -hmm. the uh, are kept maintained yes. because the rodents are yeah they are a hazard. One lady had rodents come, and they had to be raccoons because mm -hmm. they're little hands, and right. the, her garbage was all over a neighbor's house. They picked up, they pushed or whatever the garbage, yeah, and had it all over the. It was, uh, it was devastating to her, yeah, and that her garbage was on the neighbors. So the men in the neighborhood came and got all the garbage out. Isn't that community? It was, that and is. we can have more of that. Yes. And people are standing up to say we want to live better. There is a problem with the water. We know that. The, but people are not complaining about that. They're complaining about the living conditions more. You know, they're somehow struggling to make the water bills. And people are not complaining about the taxes. Mm -hmm. Our value, our property has been greatly devalued to the state equalized value yes. until it's almost zero. But yet we're paying taxes of 10, 12 years ago. Yes. We're still paying uh, taxes that are way over and above. So right. it's just not fair. And yet they're not complaining about it. That. Yeah. So the challenges are numerous. That they are. They and really so, are. All right. Well, Dr. Battle, if you would like to look into this camera and tell the audience why, in, in one minute or less, why you are the best candidate for the second yes. ward. Yes. I am the best candidate for the second ward because I care, because I am energetic, because I'm a fighter, and I will fight for you. It is time for a change. Come on. Join me. I'm in it to win it. Let's battle for change. Thank you very much thank you. for being here today, Dr. Battle. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure having you. And I thank you for having me. Thank you. And that is my guest today was Dr. Valencia Battle, second ward candidate for city council. And I am your host on Meet the Candidates. My name is Sharima Bauer, and we'll be back very soon.